Let's discuss part two of Theodore Robert Bundy, AKA Ted Bundy. Let's talk about more victims, about how he was caught, about how he was convicted, how he escaped, not once, not twice. And while out, as he escaped, he killed more victims and more victims and more victims. How did police finally stop Theodore Robert Bundy, AKA Ted Bundy? Let's find out right now. Thriller Thursday, my Cajun cuties. Yes, it's me, Anne Marie, aka the Cajun Crime Queen from Caronco, Louisiana, Cajun born, Cajun bred, and when I die, I'll be Cajun dead. I hope after this video that y'all like, subscribe, and comment, and don't forget to press on that notification bell so you never miss a video from me, Anne Marie. I hope y'all have a beverage. I hope y'all have a snuggle partner or a snuggle fur partner. Those are the best, and y'all are ready to hear a true crime story with yours truly. And did y'all go for y'all walk today? Did y'all get those tickers way up? Did y'all take the stairs instead of the elevator? Did y'all go for a brisk 20, 30 minute walk? Did y'all drink y'all water? Are y'all staying hydrated and looking fabulous as y'all do right now? Remember, drinking water is the key to glowing skin. And also getting those tickers up the first part of the day, right when you wake up, Get those endorphins up right away. You're going to have so much energy all throughout the day. And remember to stay healthy. We want to live until we're 100 years old. And today, I have some very exciting news. Today, on Thursday, April 25th, 2024, it is my 50th video. Yes, this is Anne Marie, aka Cajun Crime Queen's 50th video today. I am so excited. I am so happy to be here with y'all. This is exactly my dream is to sit on my couch and discuss crime thinking I'm a detective from the couch. I love what I do and I love being here with y'all. I love that I do all the work. I do all the research. I put everything together and I'm here talking with y'all about someone once again Part two of Theodore Robert Bundy, AKA Ted Bundy, a serial killer who we are going to discuss who killed several women, several women in cold blood, like they were nothing. And we are going to get into detail more right now. Like I stated in part one of this video yesterday, in my opinion, all victims of Ted Bundy need to be recognized. Some of them have never been found. Some of them have never been identified. And we're going to talk about some of the victims right now. On October 2nd, he abducted 16-year-old Nancy Wilcox. He claims he kept her for 24 hours before murdering her. On October 18th, 17-year-old Melissa Smith, the daughter of a police chief, disappeared. Her body was found in mountains nine days later. On October 31st, 17-year-old hitchhiker Laura Ami disappeared after leaving a Halloween party. Her body was found on Thanksgiving Day. Both Melissa Smith and Laura Ami had been beaten, essayed, and murdered. Bunny said he would shampoo their hair and put makeup on them. And after they passed away, he would look at them for days. But things would change for Ted Bundy on November 8th, 1975, when he approached 18-year-old Carol Durant at a local mall. While at the mall, Carol, Carol Durant was shopping. An attractive police officer approached her and told her that they, that they had caught a man trying to break into Carol's car, that they needed Carol to come with them to the police station. Carol said, okay goes to her car, accompanied by Ted Bundy. She looks in the car, she's like, nothing's stolen, nothing's wrong. He says, well, you have to come with me to the police station so we can write this report. She was like, do you have a badge or something that I could see? Because I don't, I, I'm, I'm kind of smelling alcohol in your breath. Something doesn't seem right. He whips out a badge, a badge that he had stolen, maybe from a police officer, I don't know. Carol gets in the car with him. And while she's driving, she noticed he takes a turn that does not 
go to the police station. She stops and starts fighting with him. He tries to get handcuffs on her. He ends up handing, handcuffing both handcuffs to one wrist. They struggling, they fighting. He says he has a gun. She's like, I don't care, shoot me. I don't care, do what you gotta do, but I'm not going anywhere with you. They struggling. She ends up getting out the car on the driver's side because I don't know if I told y'all in the first video, I don't think we talked about it yet. In Ted's car, on the passenger side, supposedly there was no handle. So the victim, his victims could not get out. They struggled. She was going back and forth with him. He was trying to beat her over the head with a crowbar. And all of a sudden, a car, a car is coming. She stops the car in the middle of the road. She gets in the car, tells the car, take me straight to the police station. Here it is, November of 1974. And this is where things start to get messy for Ted Bundy. He is getting messy. And now his very first victim has escaped from Tim. And now there is a face to Ted Bundy and a witness. Before we move on with Ted Bundy, I just want to tell y'all, y'all don't ever just get in a car with someone, especially a stranger. I mean, Carol tried to kind of be like, do you have a badge? Then she saw his VW bug and she kind of questions herself. If you have to question yourself, you maybe you shouldn't get in the car with them. So don't ever get in a car with a stranger, no matter what, because I highly doubt a police officer is going to go find you in the mall, tell you your car got broken into, come with them. I mean, the whole story just didn't make sense. But back then, we weren't thinking there was a serial killer around. You know what I mean? But... Ted was now extremely frustrated that he couldn't kidnap, essay, and murder Carol Durant. So four hours later, he found 17-year-old Deborah Kent and murdered her. Deborah was abducted. A key to the handcuffs were found, and that same key unlocked the handcuffs that were found on Carol Durant. At this time, Ted's girlfriend, Elizabeth, was getting suspicious. By 1975, Ted was out of control, just on a killing spree. On January 12, 23-year-old RN Karen Campbell disappeared. Her body was found a month later. She was bludgeoned to death. On March 15, 26-year-old Julie Cunningham disappeared. He murdered her and would, and would revisit her remains. On April 6, Denise Oliveson, 25, disappeared. She was murdered and Bunny dumped her body. On May 6, 12-year-old Lynette Carver was kidnapped by Ted. He S-8'd her and then drowned her in the bathtub. On June 28, 15-year-old Susan Curtis vanished. He confessed to murdering her, but his luck ran out. On August 16, 1975, he was arrested. The cops found a ski mask, crowbar, handcuffs, trash bags, tape, rope, and an ice pick. And guess what, y'all? Y'all know what the crazy part is? When he was arrested, and his car was this, you know, kill kit, as we would call it today. But he said, thank God the cops didn't look any further in his VW bug. Because they would have found Polaroids of his victims. Polaroids. I don't know if they were pictures of the dead bodies. I don't know if they were pictures before, but from what we know, Ted would not stalk his victims for days, months, whatever. He would pick them that day. So in my opinion, I think those Polaroids he had in that VW bug the cops never found, I believe that they were pictures of his deceased victims and what he did to his victims. And another thing is, he said when he got out of jail that first time, he destroyed those pictures. So no telling where those pictures are. When Ted was confronted by his girlfriend, Elizabeth, about all the stuff that he had stolen from her, he told her, if you tell anyone about anything, I will break your effing neck. She said that he was starting to scare her. And another thing that I didn't know was that she had started putting two and two together and reported Ted to the police because every time she saw a sketch, people would, she would ask people, who does this look like? Automatically, they said Ted. But the cops said it was a bronze VW bug. 
Ted drove a tan VW Bug. It was almost white. It was a huge difference. Like the color of my shirt would probably be bronze, but tan is almost white. So she's like, oh, but they said it's a bronze VW Bug, so it's definitely not Ted. But even his own girlfriend at the time, Elizabeth, started putting two and two together. And later that year in 1975, in September, he sold his VW Bug to a teenager, but FBI impounded that VW bug, and that's when they found strands of hair of some of the missing victims. They knew Ted Bundy was responsible for these missing victims. They just had it in their mind that he was their guy. And on October 2nd of 1975, they put Ted Bundy in a lineup, because remember, Carol, the ranch could identify him. She escaped him. So they brought all these men in for the lineup. Ted got some like facial hair. He, instead of parting his hair to one side, he parted on the other side. He had gained a couple of pounds. He tried to disguise himself. But right away, Carol DeRanch pouring him out in seconds, knew exactly who he was the second he walked into that lineup. Now, that is... As we all know, as I talked about in my first video, that I was approached by convicted serial killer Derek Todd Lee back in 2002, which still scares me to this day. You never forget that face. You never forget the face of someone who was attacking you. I was never attacked. But after I saw everything Derry Todd Lee did to all these victims, I will never forget his face. And Carol DeRanche did not forget Ted Bundy's face. And they went on trial. Ted went on trial for a, trying to abduct and kill and kidnap Carol DeRanche. And acted as his, his own attorney. He pled not guilty, but he was found guilty and sentenced to one to 15 years in jail. Now remember, Ted Bundy was acting as his own attorney and y'all, y'all should have seen him in court. He was charming, he was good. He would say things like to a witness, can you point out the person that abducted you? And she would say, yes, you abducted me. He would try to speak about himself in the third person, but he was good. He was smiling. He would sit on this, uh, sit on the bench with his arm up, and he was. I mean, I'm telling y'all, y'all have got to go watch his trial. You know, he's acting like a lawyer. You got his hand in his pocket. He's pointing his finger at the witness. I mean, it's just crazy. But he's good. He would have been an amazing attorney, an amazing attorney. But on June seventh, nineteen seventy seven, since Ted was acting as his own uh, own attorney. He wanted to go to the librarian courthouse to do some research about his case. So he wanted to do some research. While he was there, he jumped out of the second story window, injuring himself. He, and they said he injured his leg really bad. For six days, he was out and about. He was in these mountains. He was looking for food. He was injured. And in those six days, they said he lost between 20 and 25 pounds. I mean, he looked horrible when they caught him. When they were bringing him back inside the courthouse, I mean, he was like skinny, looked like he hadn't slept in days. But his escape route wasn't over, even though he was captured just six days later. A few weeks later, months later, I should say, he lost so much weight, around 35 pounds, to wiggle his way into this crawl space above his cell. You know how you, a long time ago, I'm showing my age again, y'all, showing my age, because it's at my parents' house. Those ceilings, you can just kind of pop them and they move, you know, now you can't do that. But, but he lost enough weight and wiggled his way through the crawl space and escaped on December 30th, 1977, in which he went on another killing spree. A killing spree that will go down in history as one of the worst killing sprees ever. What he did in those six short weeks while he was out and about was terrible. 
Ted stole a car, ended up in Atlanta, and then boarded a bus to Tallahassee, Florida, where he ended up in January at Florida State University. And what happens next is absolutely terrible. One week later, on January 15, 1978, Ted Bunty entered FSU Chi Omega sorority house through a rear door. He killed 21-year-old Margaret Bowman and 20-year-old Lisa Levy and bit deeply into Lisa Levy, leaving teeth marks. He attacked two other students, but they survived. The level of evil was horrible. He went in there just killing people. On February 9th, 12-year-old Kimberly Leach was lured by Ted Bundy. Her body was found seven weeks later. She was essayed and murdered by Ted Bundy. On February 12th, he was found on Pensacola in Pensacola, Florida. Ted Bundy went on trial for the murders at the Chi Omega sorority house. Now remember, when he bit Lisa Levy so deeply, his teeth marks were just in her body, okay? So they did, you know, a cast of his teeth and found out his teeth matched that bite. And 12-year-old Kimberly Leach was lured by him. Supposedly, um, he told her there was something wrong with her dad or something to get in the van with him. And she was seen crying by someone and getting in the van. The witness thought he was just an angry dad with their daughter. They didn't think anything of it. He brought her to this secluded area where he did horrible things to her and left her in this pig pen. It was absolutely terrible what he did to these victims while he had escaped jail. He was on a whole nother level of evil, the work of the devil. This man, to me, is the devil. Horrible, horrible man. He was found guilty and sent to death. Not once, not twice, but three times, okay? For the Chi Omega sorority house and the death of Kimberly Leach, he was sentenced to death by electrocution. In 1980, while Ted was doing his appeals and his trials and everything, he put a witness on the stand. Who does he put on the stand? Carol Boone. Y'all remember we discussed Carol Boone earlier? Just remember, Carol Boone, you remember that name? She was saying how charming he was and how wonderful he was, and there's no way he could commit all of these murders because he was just so wonderful. So what does he do? He asks his Carol Boone to marry him, and she says yes. Not only does she marry Ted, but in October of 1982, they welcomed a beautiful little girl named Rosa Bundy. And y'all, I know what y'all thinking, just like me. How the heck did Carol Boone get pregnant by Ted Bundy while he was incarcerated? It is believed that the guards kind of turned their heads. And sometimes she said the guards even walked in while they were in the act, but it was no problem for them to have sex while he was incarcerated. Then there's rumors that other things happened that, you know, between them two, like switching of items through other parts of bodies. I'm not going to get into it, but Hands down, she got pregnant for Ted Bundy, and she had a little girl in October of 1982, Rosa Bundy. It is said that she changed her name now, and that which I understand. I mean, she doesn't want to be affiliated with that, but her father was a serial killer and was a horrible serial killer, one of the worst that has ever lived, and maybe she didn't want that stigma behind her. Every time you say the last name Bundy, the first person anybody thinks about is Theodore Robert Bundy, a.k.a. Ted Bundy, who is a monster. Ted Bundy confessed to decapitating 12 of his victims, and some of his victims weren't even found, which is the crazy part. And it is, it is insane to know that he said that after he decapitated some of these victims that he would go spend the night with them lay with their carps, practice necrophilia. The things he did was absolutely terrible. And that's not all. 
of course, he lost every appeal. I mean, he was going to be sentenced. He, he was going to be put to death. He was going to be electrocuted. And I think Ted knew that. That's why he started slowly confessing. I also saw in the courtroom and outside of the court, courtroom, y'all, these women were in love with Ted Bundy. Just like the Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez. Just like Charles Manson. They thought this man didn't murder anybody. He was so good looking, so charming, didn't think he did anything, didn't think he killed, essayed women, you know, decapitated them. They thought, these women thought Ted did nothing. They were flirting with him, sending him money, everything that you could think of. But in, in the real world, he was a killer. And if he was alone with these women, he would have probably killed them, then did crazy things to their body. And you know what else? One of the officers said that in an interview that he went to Ted's cell one time and said, you know what, Ted, I really think that you hate women and you were just upset with women because of what your mother did, not telling you who your real mother was and that a girl you love rejected you. It was said that when that officer told Ted that, he destroyed his cell. He got angry. He was full of rage. He started pulling his bed out of the wall. I mean, he was just enraged. So maybe Ted was doing all of these killings because he really was upset with women. Maybe he hated women. He hated his mom for not telling him about where he really came from and who he really was to her. Who she really was to him. I'm sorry. Diane Edwards for rejecting him. For all these women that he wanted that he couldn't have, did he hate women or was he just killing to kill? Another thing, Ted made the comment that a lot of the killings had to do with him looking at porn. Now, I'm not going to lie. I've seen porn before. I've seen a Playboy magazine before. I'm sure a lot of us had. I'm sure a lot of you watching right now have seen porn and have seen a Playboy magazine. That doesn't make us a serial killer. So him blaming porn on all of this, all of his killings, I'm sorry. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. There are several people in this world that have watched porn and that have looked at dirty magazines and are not out there just killing people. So I, I'm not buying that. I just think Ted hated women and wanted to kill. I mean, if you're three years old and you find the knives and you're lining knives up next to people and you're building traps to hurt other people, were you born to kill? Was Ted Bundy born to kill? Because in my opinion, this is not a normal person. He was a narcissist, he was a sociopath, a psychopath. And on January 24th of 1989, he is put to death by electrocution. And I'll tell you what, I have absolutely no remorse. I think Ted Bundy got exactly what he deserved. I think this man right here is a monster and he is in hell dealing with it. Because what he did to his victims was absolutely terrible. 20, were, 20 victims were confirmed to be his. He confessed to killing 30 victims, but police believe he killed more than 40 women. What do y'all think? Because this man right here is the face of evil. My final thought, y'all know I always give y'all my final thought. And today, after this part two of my 50th video, I just want to tell y'all that I, in my opinion, I believe that Ted Bundy was born to kill. I do believe he was very upset about being bullied, about not about having a speech impediment and not really speaking to the age of three, being a loner, doing all of these things, being arrested at a very young age for burglary and stealing things and start and wanting just at three years old wanting to hurt people and create these traps. I think that Ted Bundy needed to get help for what he went through. I do not think it's because of his mom not telling him that was really his mom. I don't believe it's because of Diane Edwards. He hated her. I just think 
Ted Bundy wanted to kill and he was going to do whatever he needed to do to kill. I want to bring something else up. Remember the Chi Omega sorority house that he went into on January 15th of 1978 and brutally murdered two women attacking four in a matter of 15 minutes? Do you want to know who else did that in a matter of 15 minutes? Suspected serial killer Brian Christopher Kohlberger went into a college house and brutally attacked and murdered four people in 15 or 20 minutes. Like that. Was he born to kill as well? Did he want to be like Ted Bundy and just kill to kill for the thrill of it? Because Ted Bundy, to me, wouldn't get away with what he's getting away with today. If that was going on today, it would be very hard to get away with. And if this man wouldn't have got caught, he would have kept killing, which he did. Because as we all know, serial killers have to feed. They need to kill like all the rest of them in this world. And that's what Ted Bundy wanted to do. He wanted to kill. And the, the two times he's escaped, the second time, he killed. And let me tell you all this. Even though a lot of people think that they're going to get out of jail and, and do the right thing, Ted wanted to keep killing. And no matter how many times he escaped, he was going to get out and keep killing. And one more thing before I end this video. Do y'all want to know where Ted Bundy wanted his ashes scattered? He wanted his ashes scattered after his death because he was cremated on the Cascade Mountains where he said he had several good times. But you know what else was in Cascade Mountains? Several of the remains of his victims. Is that sick or is that sick? He is a sick and twisted individual that is paying for his killings in hell. I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. Yes, it was my 50th video. I hope that y'all like, subscribe, and comment. And don't forget to press on that notification bell so you never miss a video from me, Anne Marie. Remember to always stay safe. Always be aware of your surroundings so you don't get attacked by this man right here that I can't wait to take down his pictures because I don't even want to look at him anymore today or ever. And, and... Thank y'all so much for the love and support. I appreciate all of y'all. Y'all mean the world to me. And y'all keep watching because no matter what, I'm going to keep putting out videos for y'all because I love y'all all very much. Bye.